Hello friends, welcome to HR Capability Building Program, Psychology for HR series. In this video, we would learn about memory encoding, what is memory, how it is encoded in our brain, and why this knowledge, and how this knowledge is so important for HR professionals. I am Vikas Vats. You can know more about me at vikaswats.com. My company is Value Added Training Systems and Consulting, vats.in. So as I told you in this video, we are going to learn about memory encoding and how that is useful for HR. So after knowing, after learning about memory encoding, we would see how we can use this information in optimizing various HR processes. For example, L&D, R&R, engagement, PMS, LMS, attrition, HR analytics, and IR. So as you can make out, because this video is related to memory encoding, most of the time I would spend is on L&D because the uses of memory encoding, most of it is in L&D. But of course, I will touch other HR processes also that how we can use this information to optimize all other HR processes. So are you ready? Great. Let's start. So let's start with memory encoding. So this picture is sufficient to tell you everything about memory encoding, how memory works. Okay, don't get overwhelmed with so many boxes and arrows. I'll take you through this journey one by one and I'll explain to you all the terminologies here. So let's start with sensory input. What is sensory input? As you know, we have five sensory organs and continuously a lot of information is reaching our brain through these five sensory organs. So this is sensory input which reaches into our brain. Once in the brain, this forms sensory memory. Now sensory memory is for milliseconds, but if paid attention, now attention is the important word. So in this picture, in overall memory encoding thing, you will learn, you need to remember only two important terminologies. First of them is attention. So starting from sensory organs, information has reached sensory memory where it is for only for a few milliseconds. And if not attend it, if attention is not paid, the information is lost. So if we pay attention to the memory in sensory memory, then it becomes short term memory. Now short term memory is only for five, six or seven seconds again, but if rehearsal is done, so this is the second terminology which we need to remember. Once in the short term memory, if the rehearsal is done, then that information goes into long term memory. So when information, when any information starts from sensory memory, we need to pay attention and rehearse so that it reaches the long term memory. That's the process of memory encoding. So let's try to understand attention and rehearsal in little bit more detail as you know every second almost three lakh bytes of information reaches our brain through sensory inputs but all of that is not encoded or registered our brain automatically filters most of it only 800 bytes are registered now on what basis brain decides what has to be registered and what has to be ignored now, for example, now when you are listening to me, maybe your mind is automatically filtering a lot of not so useful information like some sound from the outside, maybe the noise from the AC or fan or so, anything like that. So once your brain knows something is important for you, it automatically starts paying attention to it. You must have observed when you buy a new car or mobile, or even if you think about buying a particular car or mobile or anything, any, any product, you immediately start seeing more number of advertisements related to those products on television and you immediately start observing more of those cars on the roads. They're not trying to spam you. That's how mind works. Once it knows what is important for you, it automatically starts giving attention on those information. So out of three lakh bytes, your brain, your subconscious mind automatically chooses which 800 bytes will be registered and that is based on what is important to you. Now, based on tension, information is short term memory. So for example, you need to dial some number. So you read it and your mind knows this is important, you have to dial it. So it will be in short term memory, you'll be able to dial the number or maybe the OTPs are the good example. Uh, you remember them only for a few seconds, you put them 
in the screen and after some time you forget because you don't rehearse so that's how it works if you rehearse then only it goes to the long term memory so that's how memory encoding works yeah maybe you're thinking about this curve so this is retrieval so any information which we take out which we recall retrieve or which we uh, use that also comes out from memory short term memory only so from long term memory the information goes to short term memory and from here we retrieve it so for example you can say this is hard disk of your brain and this is ram of your brain so to store in the hard disk information goes from the ram and to take it out it again goes to the ram and you take it out so that's how memory encoding works another interesting thing forgetting curve what is forgetting curve why and how we forget and what is the speed of forgetting so after understanding memory encoding and forgetting curve we will directly go to hr processes that how to use this information to optimize various hr processes this is forgetting curve when you learn memory is here with time it goes down so it is said that even after one hour of learning something you remember only 50% of it 50% is lost immediately after first one hour and after 30 days you tend to remember any normal human being tends to remember only 2% or less than it so this is forgetting curve it is also called abinghaus curve because the psychologist abinghaus gave this curve now what to do so what we do is as soon as memory starts going down we start forgetting we do repetition repetition one memory is again at 100 percent repetition two after some time again 100 percent and after some intervals we do repetitions so that memory is again spiked to 100 percent important thing here important aspect for you to note is that the repetitions are not at same interval initially the repetitions have to be closer to each other and after some time you can keep some distance so first repetition can be on day one the next day of re remembering something the next can be in one week one month and then after a few months so that's how we can take care of the forgetting so now we know about memory encoding and forgetting curve let's come to most important part of this video how this information is important for various HR processes. We would start with LND. Till now, what we know is for memory and coding, there are two important terminologies attention, we need to pay attention, and revision, we need to revise it. As you know, in LND, most of the HR professionals, trainers, in the participants, they complain that the impact of any training program remains only for a few days, maybe a few weeks. This is the reason because one how much is the impact that depends on attention and what will be the duration of the impact that depends on revision so most of the training programs they motivate participants to do something and as you know motivation can only make you buy a new pair of running shoes but to get up early every morning and go for the job that re requires habit that requires repetition so how to do that let's see so first part attention how to get the attention of the participants in LND program. It can be instructor-led program or it can be uh, an online program. Attention is very important because it, if attention is not paid, then it will not register. It will not even go to the short-term memory. Forget about long-term memory. So first important thing, attention. So what you can do for attention is one, stringent motivation. Some participants have intrinsic motivation. They want to learn because they want to learn. That's all. But others need reason. So you need to give them some reason. Why should they learn? What's in it for me? So this is also adult learning principle. That's how adults learn. They need to know what's in it for me. Why should I learn? Is it related to my PMS? Is it going to give me some salary hike? Or how it will be useful in my career growth? Or in any other way? There has to be some reason. If there is no reason, our mind will not pay attention. Test buy-in levels. So there are some participants whose buy-in level is high. Now, what is buy-in level? So you are pouring a lot of knowledge, skill, information into their mind, but how much will go in? 
depends on their buy-in level. The same training with the same trainer impacts different participants differently. Why? The reason is they are different buy-in levels. So there are different tools and tests. That's what we like to do when we, my company, we do some interventions for any of the clients. We first of all like to test the buy-in levels of the participants. And now this is a time where you will be beginning, the HR professionals will be beginning with their training calendars. I would suggest you can go for testing the buy-in levels for the participants and then only start with your training calendar. Because if required, you may like to run some training program on willingness to learn. Once the willingness to learn increases, they will automatically start paying attention and that will increase the ROI of your training programs. R&R. So if any learning or any behavior is associated with some kind of R&R, reward and recognition, that automatically the attention increases. So how you can attach, this can be done by HR department, this can be done even by trainer to attach the attention with R&R. For example, how I like to do it is, uh, in the training program, maybe I'll ask some questions and when somebody gives the right answer, I'll give some chocolate or anything related to that. R&R can be even pejorative, the negative. So maybe I have a tennis ball in my hand. Whenever I see some participant is losing the attention, I'll throw it towards him. And the formula is, if you are able to catch it, you get some, some gift. It can be some work, it can be some motivational book, posters, chocolates or anything. But R&R is there. R and R, any kind of reward automatically increases the attention. Competition. Human beings respond to competitions in very positive way. We have seen it works even better than R and R. So in a one day training program, if there are four sessions of 90 minutes or one and a half or two hours each. So after each session, if I ask participants, okay, you ask any question based on the sessions learning to all other participants and if they are not able to answer it you'll get some reward so now that automatically increases their attention and they want to come up with something which only they have learned so th this is just one example there can be so many divisions to create different kind of competitions but now we are talking about uh, what can be done for attention part during the training program not after that after that revision there also we can use competitions but in a different way so once we reach revision part, we'll again come to competition. Formative assessments. So now imagine you are a student and your teacher gives you some work or the teacher is teaching, but there are no tests. What will happen? Automatically, the motivation of a lot of students will go down. A lot of learners don't feel like learning if they, they are not assessed regularly and fairly. So for any training program, there can be two kinds of assessments. One is summative assessment, which we usually do. Summative assessment is that is done after the training program. But another form of assessment is formative assessment, which can be done during the training program. This tells trainer how the training is going and also keeps participants on their toes and increases their attention. So this can be a formal assessment or informal assessment. And maybe using some tech, you can show the results immediately and link it with an RNR to optimize the attention. Gamification. So this is an interesting topic, little complicated also. And uh, normally gamification is not what we think. Gamification is not animation or uh, making video out of something. Gamification is when we use game techniques in non-game situations. For example, game techniques are their rules, their points, you have to achieve something and then you have to win or reach somewhere. So when you use these kind of techniques in non-game situations, LND can be one example, that is gamification. And as we know, technically Facebook is a game. And how much hooked up we are to Facebook? I mean, after every few seconds or minutes, our hand will automatically go towards our mobile phone to see who has liked us or not. So we play a game called Facebook for likes and sharing and comments. Similarly, LinkedIn is a game. Technically, LinkedIn is a game. We are playing it. Of course, there are some rewards. Rewards are related to like, sharing, comments, and also networking and maybe getting a job, but they are all rewards related to game called LinkedIn. Similarly, Pokemon or Blue Whale. 
So Blue Whale tells us that if gamification can be used properly, you can even make people commit suicide, l and smaller thing. But we need to know techniques involved in gamification and as I promised, I like to make a separate video on gamification very soon. Now we come to the revision part. After we have captured the attention, this will only have go information in the short term memory, few milliseconds, a uh, few seconds, five to seven seconds. But that is important. Once in the short term memory, we need to take the information to long term memory. And for that, what we require is revision. First technique for that is memory anchoring. Now, what we do for memory anchoring is, uh, let me give you an example. If you remember when we used to study and we are taking some exam, and there was some topic we learned, we remember. Now I'm not getting it. What was that? And suddenly I hear a single word from somewhere nearby and the, all the learning is refreshed. Now that word was memory anchoring. That helped us refresh everything. So we can create memory anchors in a training program that will help us revise the whole training program without repeating the training program. So what we do is we create special marks, mark and dice, special marks, special posters, special sunboards, and special keyrings, balloons. There so many stuff we create related to the theme of the program. And during r, &R process, in attention part, we distribute to the participants. Now they learn. Now after the training program, whenever they look at those marks, that automatically reminds them of the old training program subconsciously. So their brain knows. That is important because I'm seeing it again and it gives emphasis to it and they don't forget. The forgetting curve is uh, stopped there. Learning journeys. So learning journeys are another interesting way that uh, as we saw that to make any memory real permanent, we need to do a lot of repetitions, maybe four or five and up to three months. So learning journeys can help us in that that immediately after the training program, for example, if I'm giving some assignment, okay, uh, that is related to their action plan. So that is the first exercise. They have to go through all the program to make their action plan. And then first week, second week, and up to 12 weeks, maybe for three months, we are taking them to learning journeys. And we have seen learning journeys give very good results. So again, uh, maybe in some other video, I'll show you the case studies of some clients, how the employees have been benefited through learning journeys from blue color to white color, all of them. With some data and analytics, I'll show you very soon in some other video. IDPs, or should I say IDPs, those work. Because most of us believe that IDPs don't work. And why, when they don't work, why don't they work? The reason is lack of interest or retention that we have already seen how to develop those. Once the participants, the employees have attention, they know what's in it for me. For the longer term, then IDPs start working and we have to associate IDPs with R&R and competitions also. We have already seen, so even after the training program, when we onboard employees for learning journeys, uh, there they can be some competitions. For example, recently uh, we did a program for HODs of an organization on seven habits. So after two weeks, there was a competition that was run on the, our app, which we were using for learning journey. There was this competition which were run that out of the seven habits, which one you find most important for your organization and why? And there was some gift of 2000 piece or so, a uh, Bluetooth headphone for that. So now for this assignment, they have to go through all seven habits, compare them and find which one is most useful for their organization. And as human psychology works, whichever habit they are poor at, that only they will find most important. And now they will make a video, two to three minutes on that, as part of the competition and post on the app. This app we use works like Facebook. And now they will see each other's video. Again, they will remind themselves of all the learning, like, share and comment. And the best one will get the reward. So that's how competitions can help you a lot in revision. LMS. So a lot of us say LMS adoption rate is very low. I'm sure till now we should know why adoption rate is low because there is no interest because there is no attention. So once we relate LMS with 
attention and revision techniques, especially attention ones, then the adoption rate will go high. Ideally, LMS and uh, engagement platform should be one in organizations. If we have different platforms, so LMS and engagement, that's also not a very good idea. Once you have a single platform that serves as LMS and engagement, then you can associate LMS directly with uh, competitions, learning journeys, IDPs, and r and virtual and physical both, tangent, non-tangent both. Gamification, so as I told you, we'll know more about it in a separate video. r and we have discussed a lot about r and So now interesting thing about r and is before the impact of previous recognition or reward fades, we need to give the next shot as per Abhinghas curve, forgetting curve. So there has to be a very strategically chosen interval difference between R and R uh, in reinforcements. So that is very important. Giving two repetitions very soon or very late, both will not serve the purpose. That has to be very uh, strategic decision that what is the duration interval between different R and R shots. So we have till now discussed R&D, R&R &D, &R also we discussed up to the big engagement also I'll say a few things. So now we know that once any HR department has done any kind of engagement program for uh, the employees, its impact will start going down as per Abingas curve. So one, we need to do some kind of repetition activity so that the impact stays there. And second, the next program should happen at the right time. So I'll give you an example. One of our clients, they're a very big company, over 10,000 employees, and we do a lot of engagement programs for them. So they told me that every week they are doing engagement programs for their employees. The employees come, their family members, their parents, their kids, they come to the company, they spend whole day, there are a lot of things which are happening. And they say it takes three to four days to program one, uh, one such program. And because they are doing every week, so almost a part of HR department is busy in engagement programs only throughout the month. And they were proud we are doing so much in engagement, in employee engagement. So I asked them a simple question that, okay, that's fine, but you have more than 10,000 employees. So once an employee comes with their family, when the employee comes for the same program, engagement program, next time. So he did some calculation, the gentleman, and he told me maybe three to four years. So now for that employee, this is not engagement program. For this, it is something like, Oh yeah, they call once in a while in five years, something like that. This is not engagement. This is actually engagement program for HR. They are keeping themselves engaged. So now the duration is very important uh, in engagement programs uh, if you are doing any for the employees. Same is with the PMS. Uh, you know about uh, recency effect. So uh, that's how memory works that we tend to forget for, to take care of recency effect. Now there are a lot of technologies available where you can do continuous or real-time feedback also, that will help. LMS, we already discussed about LMS and uh, attrition, H analytics, IR, similarly, we can use the memory encoding principles in almost all the HR principles to optimize them. So another interesting implication of memory curve, memory encoding in l and is the feedback. When we are taking the feedback, now we tend to forget. So for a training program, if we are taking the feedback of a instructor-led training or, a, or any online training, if the duration between the end of the training and when the participant is giving the feedback, if we increase the duration, then good and bad, both kind of feedbacks start coming towards average mean. So if there was a wonderful training program, the feedback is very high, but we take feedback after two, three days, the impact will come down. And if there was a bad program, the rating was low, it was supposed to be low. You take feedback after three, four days or later, it will go up. So it tends to go toward mean. People tend to forget that it was good or bad. So feedback starts going towards mean. So for all LND programs, you need to take the feedback at the right time. So that should be after the training program. Uh, many times feedback we take is in the last of the program and the program has already been stressed 5 10 minutes 30 minutes extra and we don't have time so we just give the forms to participants okay you can fill later on we tell them okay we'll send you the links 
and you can fill it online but if it is taking time then you are diluting the actual feedback or maybe you like to take after three days so but whatever you do that has to be uh, that has to be done by design and not by default so that's what you can take here so this was Vikas Vats from value added training systems and consulting and under HR capability building program psychology for HR series we have just learned about memory and coding techniques forgetting curve and how this information how this knowledge is useful in various HR processes especially in L&D take care good day see you again